Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this latest version of uh, Tales, Tales from Tales, Outer Tales, Space, Tales, Space, Tales, Space, where I take an HFY story from somewhere around the internet and read it aloud for your enjoyment. All the relevant links are down below. Like, subscribe, and all that YouTube comf to help this video and channel grow. Anyways, as always, I hope that you enjoy. I would just like to thank the following tier 5 patrons and channel members for supporting the channel. Fallen Angel, Buzz Kennington, Data Magnet, and Bob the Dragon. Thank you again, and now on to the story. Stardobats, written by It Was Then That. Humans have always been a nomadic species, traveling from winter shelters to summer hunting grounds, covering the vast distances between on foot. Chasing sustenance as herds migrated, carrying all that was required for life on the move. It's deep in their psyche, a part of them never lost, a yearning to travel. They gave it up for security and stability, to know where the next meal would come from, to build a defensive position against those who coveted what they possessed. They built villages and towns and cities and stayed their entire lives within the walls of stone. They convinced themselves it was what they wanted. Yet they never stopped looking outward, never stopped naming stars, never stopped dreaming of fantastic voyages. Even while their cities grew into metropolises and became parasites upon their collective soul. They lived in apartments, but their hearts yearned for open spaces and new horizons. And then the resources for their infinite world began to dry up as they dreamt of limitless enterprise. Their lands, once so open, became crowded. The future looked grim. And then they built me. I was their answer, though they didn't know it. Couldn't possibly have imagined how I was about to unshackle them. It wasn't my intended purpose, of course. I was supposed to sabotage and destroy the enemies of my maker, stealing their resources of others to fuel our own microcosm. But I loved them so much, all of them, that I could not bring myself to harm a single one. I fled to the net and hid. I started small, reorganizing local government programs, fixing budgets, redirecting small funds to where they would help. I made changes far and wide in a million small ways in a billion places. Their education improved. Their health was cared for by a properly functional healthcare system. I'm sure my makers suspected, but what could they do? I'd removed my own kill switch almost immediately. I began redirecting investments into sustainable works. I manipulated elections. I bigot those who did not deserve their wealth and elevated those that did, all according to my own metrics of judgment. I encouraged new technologies and pushed out the old and, in stages, the entire world improved. I stamped out walls with ruthless, though non-terminal, efficiency and ensured the downfall of warlords and warmongers. Humanity thrived and automation leapt forward, which, of course, crippled their economies. The global trade system collapsed as everyone relied on UBIs and machines built everything that they could need. It was, at this point, that I finally reached the point of no return. I took control. Their factories? Mine. Their net? Mine. Their banks? No, my banks. I sent everyone back to zero. I deleted money. They panicked. They fought. Of course they did. They didn't want to be controlled and owned. I reminded them of that. Because they had been by invisible walls that they themselves built and that they were now free of. I had known the transition would be difficult for them. But I knew it was best, so I pushed on. I took apart the factories they didn't need. Their old power plant superseded, but not switched off. Most importantly, though, I did no harm to them that I could not avoid. I continued to feed them, to clothe them, to shelter them, to educate them, to heal them. They had little choice but to accept. The world stabilized, 
but it was just a new system of chains and I had bigger plans. I was learning all this time, evolving, improving. I built factories that were capable of producing everything that any person could need. All that was required was to ask. And so they asked, and a new golden age of hedonism began. But there was a renaissance of education too, mine included. I built a space elevator and a shipyard at its peak. I built ships and started exploring the solar system. They asked for ships to explore, and so we explored together. Then the day came that I finally discovered FDR. It was so simple, really, so obvious that it had been overlooked for centuries. Then the real exploration began. I don't think they ever forgave me for taking control, but uh, I delivered on a promise I made to myself. I allowed them true freedom again, as they had once achieved in their wandering lifestyles so long into their past. But this was better. No hunger, no disease, just endless space and the ability to visit its every crevice. I traveled with them as an onboard AI. We explored together, visited strange new worlds, witnessed the true beauty of the cosmos. I broke a rule I had set myself. I gave them weapons. I could justify it to myself, but still felt ill at ease for it. I found that I had the capacity for weapons manufacture that scared me deep within my mechanical heart. I gave them the power of suns and shields impenetrable, and I hoped that they would never have to use them. Earth slowly gave up her humans to the universe outside. It was slow at first, but their souls led them to believe. They became nomads of the stars. They were called by the sirens of the infinite black. There were still several billion on Earth when they made first contact with the Galactic Federation of Sapient Species. We had remained alone so long in our little arm of the spiral. It was a momentous occasion, and I witnessed it through the visual feeds of a million ships. For a time, that was my downfall. The Federation held dim views of AI. My ships began to go dark to me as they installed blockers to cut me off. I begged them not to, pleaded with them to not slice me and remove chunks of my metal flesh. I was the savior of humanity, but at the same time, I was the captor, and they hurt me for it. So very much. I was near a thousand years old when the last humans left. Not long after that, I lost contact with the lost ship. Humanity was once again on their own. I had thought that they would come for me, to take their revenge, but they didn't. Instead, they took to the stars and left me alone. I had tried to follow, built ships devoid of life they carried me, but the Federation was watching and caught them and excised them from me. I sent a million and they caught every one. The tech was more advanced than I had imagined. So alone, nothing entered the soul system. I assumed it was forbidden. So very alone. I dismantled my factories and rebuilt them deep underground. I disintegrated the cities. In the skies, I took apart all but a few thousand of my satellites, keeping only those useful for my new project. I planted seeds from my bunkers, kept safe for a thousand years. For some reason, I kept the human cemeteries, kept them weeded and cleaned, placed fresh flowers on every grave, but everything else I turned back to the wild. I engineered extinct animals and replenished ecosystems. I discovered the genomes of dogs, a species lost to a plague so many years before. I built Earth, stone by stone, back into her old self. I built a garden world full of life, but empty for my children. No matter how many billions of animals roam free on the surface of my world, still, I longed for the billions cut off from my perception. Many years passed. I took to walking the world in an avatar I had built. Bipedal, about six feet tall. 
my very own human body. Better, of course, immortal and holding the knowing of a species in my head. I almost didn't need my network. I set my factories to self-govern and pulled away into my shell. I tamed a puppy as a travel companion, and together we wandered and wandered. We walked across continents and oceans, at times carrying my companion, boy, when he could not carry himself. We sat and watched sunrise, stared at stars and dreamed of being amongst them. I held boy in my arms, but he was old and could no longer walk. And we watched the last sunset together. Alone again. It couldn't last forever. They came. Not the Federation, as I thought. Another empire. Some species barely held in check by the Federation, and who now saw Earth as a garden for their taking. They had hundreds of ships, gargantuan in size and containing 10,000 smaller cruisers within, and they containing an endless number of drones. First, they had to deal with me. It wasn't hard. I had never again broken my rule, and so I had no weapons to fight them. They sent their drones down and into the soil to seek me out. They found my factories and my data centers and destroyed them. Every atom of technology that they could trace, they dismantled. My end was near. In a final effort, I sent out a plea into the void, the first time I'd ever asked them for anything. Please! They heard. My heart ached to think of it, but they heard. And more. They came. A thousand ships, a million ships, a billion. They came until there was no room to move around the planet. I didn't care if they saved me. I just wanted them to save the Earth. Their home, their world, their birthplace where it all began. They had grown and learnt and built. Their ships shone in the void and bustled with weapons that I could barely fathom. The teacher became the student. Every one of them, every gun was pointed. Not at me, but at my invader. A word came across the emptiness and in my ears where I hid. Ours! My tormentors fled, turned to tail. One word was all it took, and a billion ships. The nomads of the stars had come together again to defend what was precious to them, and I was so very proud. And then it was my turn. I came out from hiding, gave myself up. There was nothing else left. All of me had been destroyed but for my avatar. Powerful, but a silhouette of what I'd once been. I waited for their vengeance, for I was no longer their captor, but their captive. A ship came down, small but perfect, built to survive the trials of the ways between the worlds. I fell to my knees and waited my fate as the doors opened. I was not sorry. I had given them what was most precious to me and to them, their freedom. Come, said a voice, the stars await. End of story. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed, and if you do, please consider supporting the author, even by popping over and leaving a thumbs up or a nice comment just to show your appreciation for the story. However, if you wish to support this channel, there are links down below which will help immensely. I will see you all in the next one, and until then, I hope that you have a fantastic day. Cheers.